Let's talk about where we are in the war on terror in general and the administration's controversial drone policy in particular. Democratic strategist Joe Trippi joins us from Austin, Texas, and Republican strategist Carl Rove is in New York. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being here. Joe, first to you. After the back and forth we saw with Rand Paul and his filibuster and the administration's response, where do you think this stands and where is it going politically? Well, politically, I mean, look, the American people by and large are for the drone program and 56% of uh, the country is, favors it. 68% of Republicans favor it. 58% of Democrats. Independents are split. They're the only ones that are split 50 50 on the drone program itself, going after enemy combatants on foreign soil. Where the big issue is, and where there's a plurality of uh, Americans uh, have questions about using drones against American citizens, even on foreign soil, let alone on American soil. So I think Rand Paul scored a lot of points. Uh, uh, with his with his filibuster that got the Obama administration uh, to clarify its position and say that it would not use them unless there was an imminent threat on American soil against American citizens. But the issue here is where is the Republican establishment going? I mean, already both McCain and Lindsey Graham have come out pushing against Rand Paul on the filibuster. And in another sense, what's happened, I think, is because Rand Paul did what he did, it's actually positioned Obama a little bit as a hawk, uh, it, it looking tougher uh, in a lot of ways uh, in his use of drones and other things uh, than, uh, than a Democrat usually does. Carl. I, I respectfully disagree. It, it makes the administration look incompetent. Uh, most people are not focused on the fact that Rand Paul is probably the only Republican member of the Senate who opposes the president's use of drones abroad. There are a lot of Democrats who oppose the president's use of drones abroad to kill Americans without some kind of due process. What they look at is what this controversy was about, which was Rand Paul sent a letter to John Brennan asking the attorney general whether or not, the, quote, the president has the power to authorize lethal force such as a drone strike against a U.S. citizen on U.S. Soil and without trial. And uh, the letter that uh, was sent on March 4th by the Attorney General is full of, uh, you know, just completely confusing. Were such an emergency to arise, I would examine the particular facts and circumstances before advising the President on the scope of his authority. Then we have a hearing in which Holder is brought up before uh, the Senate. Ted Cruz of Texas says to him, You got a suspected American terrorist with terrorist ties sitting having a cup of coffee in a cafe. Can you take him out with a drone? And there's a terrible answer from from a holder, thereby prompting this filibuster. And, and then, then following the filibuster, uh, the Attorney General on March 7th sends a, sends a two-sentence letter saying, you asked this question, the answer to that question is no. So the, this was boggled by Attorney General Holder. If he'd answered it right, which is the President has no authority, absent an imminent threat to deploy military force on U.S. soil, this would have been a nothing burger. But instead, the incompetence of the Attorney General makes the President look weak and weasel particularly among his own base. I, I, Go ahead, Joe. I was going to say I agree with Carl on that this should have been a nothing burger. They're, they're really, if Holder had answered this question right the first time, we, we wouldn't have had the filibuster. There would have been no reason to do this. The other, uh